In early 2020, you may remember the world was struck down by one of the worst pandemics it's probably ever seen. Um, it was really hard times. Millions of people were affected by this. Um, I am, of course, talking about the abandoned project car pandemic that swept the world, you know, and we can all agree drove up the prices of old cars quite considerably and new cars as well but that was for a slightly different reason but the often referred to as lockdown project cars they litter the UK and uh, yeah sadly I fell victim to that too as you can see here hopefully though I'm, I'm hoping I can come through the other side of that one day you know I just need to sort of get my motivation back on it and just do it you know I will do it it just takes a little bit of time and you know I've restored about nine ten cars in between getting that and where we stand today but still I will do that one but for some reason there's a lot of these things hanging around you know this one is no different to any of the others this is a project that someone took on, did a bit of work to, and then it all halted, you know? And I'm here to try my best to restart this project and get this thing back on the road in a big way. And this is a Tasty Classics abandoned lockdown project special. So what's the actual story behind this car then? Well, as is usually the case with most sort of abandoned projects, it got to a stage where the hard work really had to begin in terms of bodywork and transforming it and making it look into a bit more of a finished car. And that's where it ground to a halt. And that's where I've stepped in. I've been told that this car runs, drives, well, it drove off the trailer, I know that how well that's as far as i've gone though do you know what i mean i've not gone any further than that we're going to experience that together was i lied to is this going to blow up the second we take it on the road who knows but we're going to find out and we're going to find out today so those of you um who are quite in tune with your old triumph spitfires which this is one of you'll know that this is a triumph spitfire 1500 which is the last of the Spitfires that were made from about 1975. Um, I can't remember when they finished, maybe 79, something like that. But the 1500 was ever slightly different to the Mark IV with a few changes, mainly 1500 engine, a couple of interior bits, wheels, that sort of stuff. But it's very, very similar to a Mark IV Triumph Spitfire. So a lot of the parts and stuff will go over. There's not big changes in bodywork or anything like that. It's all pretty, pretty standardised. And yeah, I can see a lot of potential with this car. Should we take a closer look? So this car is really small, yeah? Like, I'm kneeling down, praying to the car god that everything's going to go okay in this episode. By car god, of course. I mean Jeremy Clarkson. Now... My head's well above this already. Someone on the Facebook um, and uh, Instagram shared a picture of one of these next to two American trucks, which I'll flash up here, and you can see the size of these things compared to, I don't know, real cars or whatever. In fact, there's an American truck there. We'll, pro we'll put these next to each other at some point in the future. That'd be good, wouldn't it? But anyway, they're very small. I can just get in it, shoehorn me into it, you know? Um, you have to sort of fold me up and slide me in but I do get in there 
I want to look at this now in a d different way to how we usually do because as you can obviously see by the fact it's about nine different cars thrown together um, that it's going to need painting. This is the original colour, this blue. This was a giant blue, quite common that you see. I really like it. I want to put the car back to that colour. So I'm looking at it, not in the same way that we usually do with the cars that come through on the channel. I'm looking at it in a perspective of, right, what am I going to need to do? What am I need to going to potentially buy in order to paint this car? Now, for example, when I bought this car, the advert said that it was super solid. No welded needed or anything like that, which is, you know, pretty impressive for a Triumph Spitfire. I've looked at loads of these things in the past. For about 10 years, I've wanted a Spitfire. I thought the time was right now because it's summer and we can get the roof off and that'd be fun. But also, this one came up that said it was solid. It's had welding work in the past. They pretty much, 99% of them, I would say have had welding work in the past as well so um, it's to be expected now this thing is really nice and solid it's metal everywhere you know the fillers at uh, the the wings have seen a bit of filler you know the, these quarter panels have had a bit of filler work but <laughs> and guess what they're probably going to see some more but they're there they're nice they're clean, they're tidy, nothing's rusted through, there's no holes or anything. So I'm like, right, okay, we're all right in this area, you know. These little finishing strips, you know, that's there. I can see on the back there's some finishing strips missing, so I'm going to have to have a little look into that and maybe, you know, get purchasing some stuff. Yeah, The bonnet's obviously off a different car, you know. <laughs> um, all this bit down here going along there it sticks out about half a mile over there it needs fettling with it needs sorting out before we get sort of stuck into it but it's a solid metal bonnet and if you know spitfires again i've seen loads of these they rust like buggery it has had some welding work done on the front as well you can see here that someone's welded up patches on the front of this bonnet Again, really sort of commonplace area for these Spitfires to go. It's the front of the bonnet and everything underneath there. It's, this looks good. This is, this is nice. It is though, very, very, well now it's not a very nice shape. Do you know what I mean? It's gonna need some sort of crafty filler work to make that look all smooth and nice. There's probably quite a bit of time just in this lip hair to make that look half decent you know but we'll be able to do it i'm confident a couple of bits under here as well like the the grill isn't quite sort of attached properly and then there's a red thing here nothing else on the car is red but this bit is um lights look okay though this is what i'm looking for am i going to need to buy new lights i know they're all okay you know these look okay well mind you i don't know what like inside but again we're going to go through all that sort of stuff and we'll find out won't we you know but there is quite a bit of work to do on this bonnet, I think. Around this side, it's pretty much the same story, you know? Everywhere you look, there is something that needs you to put your hands on. But the mirrors are there, you know? The, 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 the handles, the, this isn't attached. It's all there, you know? Needs a bit more filler in places like here. You can see there has been some work there. So it's a good basis on the top in the shell to do some work with but what about the rest of the car i've been told that mechanically this thing is good everything should work you know all this sort of stuff so we'll get stuck into that in a second but in terms of like when was the last time it had an mot or anything like that well there, there has never really been one electronically nobody can tell me the last time this thing was properly on the road there's a text disc here that says October 1995. <clears throat> so uh, where's it been? What's it been doing? Who knows? It's 1977, so it's been um, MOT and tax exempt since 2017. But still, you know, where has it been in that time? A lot of work has been done. I'm hoping it is all going to be good and we are just going to have to do finishing jobs. But let's have a little look inside. We'll get the keys and we'll see what works and what doesn't, you know. 
Well, that works. Yeah, fine, that's factory. There's no door cards. I think there's door cards there. And this, again, the doors look fairly solid. All these bits look fairly solid. That steering wheel's absolutely gorgeous. Should we try and, uh, it's like a clown car this, isn't it? Should I try and get myself in? Let's do it. <sighs> what should I do first? Like a leg? Uh, <laughs> Fuck. Oh God. Oh, it crushed the microphone. Oh. I'm in. That was really comfortable. Um, maybe ah, there you are. Uh, I don't. I, I, I'm not sure about trying the other leg yet. Should we try and take this roof down? That was easy. I won't push it any more than that just yet. Okay, that's great. I mean, I can just sort of directly see this bit of the windscreen, but that's fine, isn't it? First thing I have noticed though, is there is one sun visor, not two. Did they come with driver's side sun visors? I'm not sure. This steering wheel is gorgeous and it looks like it's brand new as well, which is really cool. It's got Triumph badge in the middle, which is very good. That's just come off in my hand. For fuck's sake. There you go, I've stuck it back on. I'm going to try and get my other leg in. Yeah! Oh, just shut this door. Oh, hi. If I wore this cap when I was driving, though, I think it's coming straight off, isn't it? As soon as there's a slight gust of wind. I wonder uh, if I could touch the floor I could if there was a hole in the floor I could probably pick the car up and put my legs through couldn't I? Uh, right then so we're showing 90,985 miles um, and I mean yeah there's a few bits there um, before I got into this though I did forget to grab the keys so I've got to get out again Fuck. Jesus, what am I broken? Okay, where's the keys? Back down the coal mine. Ah. Microphone again, for fuck's sake. Right. Ah. Oh. Okay, keys. There is three keys with this car. The big one always starts the car. That's just how it is. Don't know why. Right, okay. The keys is right in the middle, the key, the ignition. Great. Leyland Cars AA validation slip. Date of expiry 1978. Cool. One year after it was made. <laughs> Brave, wasn't it? One thing with this car is the gear shift knob is from a different car and this is a problem because it took me so long to find reverse the other day because reverse is actually sort of uh, up and over there as opposed to where it says it is on the gear knob why would you do such a thing anyway it's quite a smart gear knob i'll probably just leave it let it confuse the next owner this might be a good anti-theft device speaking of anti-theft devices i've just noticed there's loads of screws missing from that as well put some more in there it's got a like a battery cut off thing I guess I won't move them <laughs> um, up here somewhere this goes in don't mind me is that on oh Sounds like it's on. I was told that this thing's got a electric fuel pump 
and I didn't really need telling that because when you put the ignition on it's all you can hear because it's right behind your head these did have mechanical fuel pumps but they have put an electronic one on it that's fine what's that you know that's good I you know whatever clutch pedal it's there brakes there although it doesn't want to rise back up straight away that's weird and full okay should we try and start it choke out okay thanks very much for watching this will it run episode yes it does this isn't a will it run episode because there's a lot of those going on at the moment isn't there you know this is a will it see the road again episode you know will it take us on a cool little road trip with a roof down episode do you know what i mean doesn't she tick over well though hesitation there okay right what what have we got so oil pressure is saying 60 that's cool temperature gauge fuel gauge okay um hazards what do you do twist them pull them i can hear clicking you guys can have a look for me in a bit uh and you'll have to tell me right in the comments whether or not the hazards are working um what's this one that's left and right I think now I think this one here is wiper blades I'm not going to touch that because the windscreen's dirty and this main beam and dip beam I think and then there's something down here that does something else I'm not sure what that is so we'll just leave that not a lot else to see if it works there's no stereo it's sad isn't it there's no um I can't oh there's an ashtray there. there's anything there no. there's no like um blower fan switch do these have blower fans, blower motors? Oh, I've just pushed that thing in. I don't know what it does, so I've just pushed it in. It's not coming out. Don't mess about with things. I feel like I've just switched something on because there's two big wires coming from the back of it. Oh, well. That sounds really nice. The bonnet on this thing is really low down. No, the bonnet on this thing is different to a lot of cars. It has these catches here. And it lifts up from the back. And it lifts up from the back. Oh, like so. Oh. Look at these! That sounds good. That sounds good. Just set the brake fluid and it doesn't look and smell like olive oil, so that's fine. Wondering why that pedal's not coming up very fast. Anyway, do you want to look at this? Look at this thing just purring away. How good. How, how good. So yeah, this was just lying on there. This is the boot for the... That's the, where your pedal linkage is there and this is your piston for your clutch. But looks like... That was all put together and this was not fitted so i'm just going to put that in this box here and we'll have to redo that this is your brake thing here lots of grease on it but not returning fast and that's usually a sign of 
up a dodgy brake line somewhere, something up somewhere, so we'll have a look at that. But you know, look at all these bits here. Oh, really solid, really nice. Just needs a little bit of black paint. And all this, this is obviously off a different car, that's fine. Get all that painted up. Really cool. Block looks nice. Top looks decent. Maybe clean that up, paint that up or something, who knows? Maybe that's a job for the next owner. Looks alright though, doesn't it, you know? Now if you're going to paint this, where would you paint up to? This is always interesting. Now you could remove all of this stuff and sort of paint up to this line here, going round, you know, or even sort of go further, but yeah, I think that might be a thing to do. Maybe try and remove these bits and just pull them out the way, mask them up and get to this line here. And then we'll just do black along this bit here because we'll use that line and then yeah so we'll make a nice job out of that that should look pretty sweet when it's done just needs cleaning really and then sort of rip the sand down oh cool look at that hello foz who are you foz if you're watching foz or if anybody knows foz get in touch that's some nice welding work I like it a lot putting your stamp on the car, that's cool. Under this bonnet's obviously a different colour. Now I'll, I'll paint some bits down there and obviously the edges and things, but I'm not going to go too far into there because, well, it is what it is. You can't, you can't end up sanding, you know, the inside of the bonnet down and stuff. Do inside these wheel arches though. I don't want to give myself too much work, you know. What do they look like, these? Yeah, nice nice and solid about round here very similar story round here all really nice solid metal everywhere good nick you can see some shiny bits stuff's happened you know a little bit of wire in there to have a look at maybe stick some conduit on it you know make a bit bit of an effort Radiator, are we getting warm? Worryingly, the radiator's stone cold, but I suppose it's just uh, cycling through there. Maybe thermostat's not open just yet, but we'll leave that to take over. There's fuel filter, that's your mechanical fuel pump, which isn't hooked up, but whatever, that's fine. Oh, nice, so that's your little isolation switch that was inside the cab. That's cool again. They're quite long. Uh, relay for something or other, not sure. Wonder what that is. Interesting though, very interesting. It's all there, it looks like a good uh, good basis again. We just disconnect all this and just sort of mask it all up. Get all that bit painted up to this line here. Bit of work there though, a lot of sanding. So something I've taken on word here is that these are where the chassis plates should be. Now I'm told they're in the box in there. Fingers crossed, eh? God, it sounds really well. It does sound really well. So yeah, it's only a little four-cylinder 1500 this, but it's decent, isn't it? That oil filter looks like it might do, could do with renewal, so we'll get one of those on the list, you know. Just want to have a little look, just switch to off. Oh! Bit of heat coming into the top of the radiator there. Yeah, that's nice. It looks almost like coolant as well. Ooh, nice and full though, that's good. And I could feel the radiator getting warmed up, which is decent. Does this car have oil? Does it use oil to run? Oh, ah, well, this side. 
Ooh. It's black, full of bits. It's a good sign. Okay. Oh, not too hot. It's now too hot for me to put my hand on. Okay, put my hand on there. No, okay. Oh. Where's the hole? This would be easier if I was round your side. But you're there in the way. Okay, and now she comes again. Okay, so we're, you know, potentially a little bit over full. Not the worst colour. Whoa. It's definitely got 10 WC in this car, which is convertible oil. Um, obviously in the UK with all the convertibles that we have and all the nice weather, you have to use convertible oil in your car. Um, Cabriolet oil, convertible oil, whatever you call it, you know, it all does pretty much the same stuff. Uh, get that back in there. Okay. I mean, that's fine. Don't worry about the the creaminess on there. Look, it's gone now. Nice. Okay. Okay. These wipers are a bit sad, aren't they? Look at that. Right then. I like these bonnet catches. Very cool. A couple of places we haven't checked and a couple of things we haven't done. I haven't looked in the boot yet and I haven't looked through this big box of stuff that's on the passenger seat. So we're going to do that now and we'll see what's in store for us, you know. Nice. Okay. Ah. One spare wheel, old. Oh, nice little beauty ring. Looks pretty good, keep that. Oh, smart, so this is a tonno, tonno, tonno cover? Tonio cover? Don't know how to say it, but anyway, it's pretty nice. That sort of goes over there while you're sprinting along you know so that's pretty good looks in decent shape as well just need to clean one large blue tarpaulin hey -ya! okay quite a few nuts and bolts but that's a very solid floor. Do you want to have a look? Instant impressions. How good. Why is it white though? That's weird, isn't it? But whatever. We'll build a little base or something for this. You know, we'll make it all nice and we'll put a carpet on it. You can see it's had welding in the past, but pretty good welding by the looks of it. Looks nice and solid, not going anywhere. Decent. Okay. Lots of these blue things, that's great, isn't it? So I bet all the lights don't work. One cover there, no cover there. I wonder if we'll find the other cover. Look at the boot lid as well. These are usually rotten. All of these boot lids are usually absolutely rotten, but this one is in proper good nick. That's going to come up dead nice. And around here, boot seal. Oh, 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 oh delicious. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm all right, confident, you know? Very. Right then, let's try and get this out. Ah, there you go. We have two door cards. Really nice condition. Again, hopefully these will clean up and and go back on successfully. What's this? Oh wow! 
Oh, is this a tonneau, tonneau cover? Yeah, look at this. Oh, what does tonneau cover mean? You let me know what tonneau cover means. Put it in the, put it in the comments. So this is, see these two big holes here? These are where the top of these seat things go. And the idea is, is that you remove this completely, you attach this to the car, so you can park it up when you're in Los Angeles and things like that. You couldn't really do it around here because it just acts as a pool for water. But you cover the whole thing with this. That's cool, I think they're, you know, they're a few quid like, so that's nice. Looks in good nick as well. Right, let's get this back on. Ah! Box stuff. Carpet. Oh, nice. Okay. Bits of carpet there, different sort of cuts and things. I think. I don't think these are for the back. These are for the front inside sections there that have had a bit of welding and stuff on them as well. But that will be covered nicely by these. That's brilliant, isn't it? Is this a boot <laughs> uh, We'll work those out, but yeah, they're, they're, that's pretty cool. Okay, not sure what I is. And this looks like there was a door seal missing over there. Oh, it's missing here. And I bet this is it. I mean, door seals aren't particularly expensive anyway, so you might just replace these, you know, be nice to have a nice set and make the paint finish look a bit better, but whatever, we've got one there if we decide not to. What's this bent thing? What does this do? I don't know, is the answer. If you know, let me know. Oh, nice! Have we only got one of those? Ah, oh, that is a cover. That's a ceiling strip for the seam lines around the um, back lights and stuff. Sort of fix on there. But there's only one in this box. Oh well, okay. Two rear view mirrors. Okay. Couple of tags. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Paint 146. <laughs> Brilliant news. Keep that in the box. Uh, ooh, back. Bag full of stuff. That was the boot that I took off earlier. Quite a few other nuts and bolts and stuff in there, but nothing particularly of interest. So what have we got in here? A couple of mirrors, but those mirrors that are on it are really smart. Obviously old stuff. Spare seat bolt things. Clips. Yeah, okay, there's some nice bits. Some stuff is missing though. But yeah, pretty happy with that. Glad the plates are there. It would bore like if they were. I can only really think of one thing left to do now. I mean, I've been told that it runs and drives okay. The engine worked then, all the pedals seem to work. It's exempt from being roadworthy, isn't it? I mean, sorry, exempt from having an MOT and tax, so I'm insured on it. So we could just take it for a spin, couldn't we? It needs petrol, let's go and put some petrol in it and we'll see if it does drive on the roads. Because so far, we've got a really good basis of a car that, you know, the finishing, the finishing line's in sight. Do you know what I mean? So let's, uh, let's get behind the wheel. Obviously I've taken every safety precaution, including spinning 
the hat round so it doesn't fly off because the peak's above the thing. Well then, okay. Is this a good idea? Should we be doing this? I don't even know when the last time it went on the road was. Just sounds too good not to try it, doesn't it? Sure, those noises are fine. Safety first on this channel. What the hell? Did you hear that? It does not sound good. I can hear, I can feel something is not right underneath. spin that don't want to speak too soon but it would appear that we are motoring we're doing sort of 50 miles per hour towards the petrol station. Nothing really holding that window in place. Probably should have thought about that. Got up to a rate of knots then though, didn't we? Hello. I kind of feel the brakes. Oh my god, what's that noise? Something does not feel great. Feels like maybe the 
brakes are dragging at the back maybe, but then it doesn't. small but it's fairly comfortable you know I'm trying to work out something's going on at the back maybe it's the exhaust I don't think the exhaust was particularly held down very well engine feels nice so carbs seem to be doing the job choke's gone back in a tiny bit just going to sort of leave it there, let it do its thing. Just on this maiden voyage anyway. What a lot of traffic, thank you. All giving way to the mighty Spitfire. So they know what will happen if they don't, you know. I'll probably break down and cause havoc. Where's the, which side's the thing got? Oh, it's in the middle. Mm, can feel the brakes, something's dragging there. can feel the brakes dragging a touch. Right, let's put some juice in it and we'll go from there. 28 fine British pounds going into my fine British sports car. I chop the door. Be a bit of a contortionist to do this. Right, will it start again? Does the fuel gauge work? So many questions. Fuel gauge works. Ah, oh, it's ace. Okay, right, so. Oil pressure's dropped down to about two at idle, which is good. Temperature gauge is in the middle. Fuel gauge is now also in the middle. like a slipping thing but not really a clutch slipping thing because the bike feels quite normal annoyingly more of like a, a diff slipping type thing which is nicht cool you know I don't know why a diff would slip though or like a drive shaft at the back or something something's something's up anyway let's head back See there, something's not right. And then you hear that noise. Almost like the diff's going or something, I don't know. Thank you. 
Something's hot. Something's very hot. Let's go and have a look. It's my favourite place to pull over because there's never usually anybody coming down here, but that felt in many ways very good and in many ways something's wrong. Just looking to see if I can see any smoke or anything. Something feels hot. That's very cold. If that brake was binding, that would feel hot. This one is warmer though. Can I get to the drum? Mm. Drum feels a little bit warm there. Might just be old stuff rubbing off. Definitely feels like it's coming from... Ooh. I was going to say coming from the back, but... That's hot. I mean, it's not ridiculously hot, but it's warm. Yeah, there's a bit on there as well. Hmm. My attention is immediately drawn to this brake fluid here. Something is wrong. Has that just leaked out the top? I hope so. You can see it's got wet from the top there, so I hope that's just leaked out from where maybe I opened it before. Doesn't look in particularly great condition, that. Maybe time for a new one. I don't really dare touch these calipers or anything, but I can, I can, I can feel the heat off that straight away. So, potentially, we have got sticky front brakes there. Now, this is a braided hose, and quite often, there's two reasons your brakes will stick. Your caliper's seized, or your flexi's um, collapsed in on itself. But that's a braided steel one, so I'm, I'm tempted to say that that's not what's causing it, it's more the caliper. The pedal does feel like it's a flexi pipe, though, because it's not returning. About the other side. Again, bit of heat off this one. Yeah, red hot that caliper. Hmm. So potentially we've got seized brake calipers on both sides, or maybe they're just grinding a load of rust off or something, or we've got a bad master cylinder. And looking at the condition of this master cylinder and just sort of how old it looks, I'm tempted to say maybe that's the that's the issue there rather than the calipers. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it cool down and I have my lunch and then we'll drive it back to base, we'll get it up on the ramp and we'll strip everything down and we'll start to have a look into what's up there. Now the car is rolling easily, just from a little push. I say a little push, push from me. So nothing's stuck right now. <clears throat> I'm hoping it's a couple of calipers that maybe need to be worked. Ugh. But let's see if she'll come to life again. noises. Maybe not immediately apparent to you on there. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. But I can hear 
heavy users. That hedge needs cutting, I can't see when there's a car. Intuition. This drive though initially I feel like this could make a nice car you know a bit more love I'm gonna take it a bit further Past a cop car. It's probably going to come up with no insurance. Let me get my excuses prepared. See Dicky. See what Dicky thinks. You've been going that fast. It's funny that round. <laughs> Brilliant. I like that one. What do you think, so? Ain't it? It's set like so in sturdy as they said. Well, it's just the body that just lets it down. It does. Oh, oh rubber side of that one. Yeah. yeah, we've got we have got a brakes problem like okay, I'm not worried. What do you think mate? Do alright? Bit of tea cut and an oily rag, be okay. <laughs> yeah, that's No, it's the back it's supposed to be the colour that the back's in, not the front. Be fine. We have got a leak though, we've just found, just as I've got here, out of that brake master cylinder again. You can see here. Uh. So, something's up there. Get it back in the workshop, figure it out.
Look at what this thing has deposited on the floor. It's done a dirty protest all over the ramp. What's wrong with you? You just bloody had loads of new seals. Why do you want all what's your... <sighs> For fuck's sake. I can sympathise with it a tiny bit though because all I do is drive it at the absolute limit everywhere that I go with my foot completely to the floor, so... But, you know, deal with it. We'll have to... There's going to be another episode on that, I feel now. Fixing more leaks that will inevitably leak again. Right, let's get the Spitfire in. Well, I could do with them. Cover that silver thing up there. Oh yes, well, let's have a go. This now. Restoration. Gives a fucking box in there, so I took out a few rolls, but I've left one here, the one at home. I didn't need stuff on the back. <coughs> Once I had um, a Volkswagen Beetle in for welding. Right. And did the welding. And the, the, the lead lamp is using the old tapping on the normal folding tray. So I put it on the seat, the night, not thinking. It's going to burn straight through the fucking seat. Right? So, what do I do here? So I've got some black gaffer tape. Look at that now. So what I did, I've got an old car washing sponge, cut it, jammed it in the old. Yeah, 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 I love that. And then yeah. gaffer tape, like you've done there, long ways, and then went the other way as well. Both ways. Yeah, that, you'd never know that was anything wrong with that now. And then I put some under the seat when it was all split. She said, Oh, she thought you could the seats as well. I said, Well, I couldn't give you that across. Got away with it. Great stuff. Do you want to know where you drive that in for now? No. Oh, come on. It takes me 20 minutes to get in and out of it. Yeah, but I'm, I'm done with your day, it'll probably take me longer. Just have a pot and break, will it roll as easily now? The answer to that is no. We have got something sticking. Should we do some lights though? Remember, I do the buttons, you tell me if it's working, you know? So, right indicator. Left indicator. Working? Yeah. I can hear it. Uh, side lights. Oh, nice. Headlights. Uh, headlights. We have a headlight, might just be the bull. I'm not worried. Uh, lights at the back. Good news immediately here is the headlights are working and we've got one number plate light. But we need to replace that one. Indicators, left, right. That's a joke, by the way, I know it's different for you. Uh, brakes. Can I see them in the reflection? No, I can't. 
they work. Is that working? I'll watch this back. Right then, let's get this slab of British muscle car up in the air. And let's see if I've bought a doozy or if I've bought something good for a change. Still not rolling very freely. Right, what do you want as a jacking point then? Should we try that or should we try something a bit more? A bit more solid. Oh shit. Hey yeah. What have we got to play with under here? That doesn't look particularly solid. We could just try that there. Okay. Bloody oh hell, it's alright, isn't it? Ugh. Don't really know massively what else to go up on here. Try that at the back, actually. We don't want to damage the sills, do we? Yeah. Right, listen out for cracking. Still in one piece. <laughs> cool. Here's a fun game to play. When you've got a convertible, especially this is good, but it works for any old car. When you've got it on a two post lift like this, see if you can open the doors. Oh, will it close nicely? These huge gaps, nicht cool. So this is what we're gonna have to work on. Maybe try and move this around. We'll have a look at that when the bump is off. This thing here as well, it's not quite there. I don't know what's don't know what's up with that, but we'll get, you know, we'll see if there's any sort of play in like the hinges and stuff like that. Um, get that all to sit nicely. Bearing in mind this is an old British sports car, so like, you know, the 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 panel gaps were very close to this anyway from brand new, like, but we'll try and make them as good as we can. Whoa, mama! It's a big one there. Look at that. It's huge. Huge, massive gap. But I'm sure it's just a case of adjusting where the bolts are and pulling it all up and maybe hitting something with a hammer. Right, so a quick scan inside these arches then. Yeah, that's a really good nick. Really decent, solid panel there. No holes. What about the back? Again, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. There's a few, like, you can see welding patches and stuff, but it's pretty cool, man. Again, nothing to particularly worry about in here patch there but that's okay you can see some like fresh bolts and things on bits as well so it's obviously you know had some work and yeah again nice sort of chassis and everything looking decent there so that's really good so far quite pleased apart from the few little bits uh, right then, I can still feel heat coming off this. That ain't spinning. I wonder why. Probably a seized caliper, I'm hoping, but we'll whip these wheels off and we'll have a bit of a look. Better, but still a bit seized. Not great at all. Again, we'll pull these off and we'll have a little gander. And we're going in. So there's a few of these wires hanging around there. That's going to need sorting, isn't it? I wonder what that's all about. How do those, how does this underneath thing bolt on? 
Right, so there's an adjustment there, I can see. Where does that fit on here then? Just worried that it's not been welded in in the right place, but I'm pretty sure it is a bolted part. I'm going to do a little bit more digging on that and sort of see, I'll get a manual or something, you know, what's a manual? Uh, right, this bit, again, bit of, bit of um, old Schultz peeling, but everything is solid as. And this, again, I know I sort of do rave a little bit about Schultz and stuff, but you can obviously tell this has had some in the past. And guess what? It's worked, you know. That is really nice. It just needs, you know, a good... Oh my God, look at that. Right, here's your advert for Schultz, yeah? Come look at this. And don't forget, I'm not like sponsored by these guys or anything, yeah? But look at this here. Look how good that metal is underneath there, underneath this. I imagine it's Schultz, nothing else was really available like that back in the day, but that is properly good. You know, I'll just stick to it, thanks, that's what I'll do. Everything else looks all right. Oh, need a boot for that, or maybe like a a new chat with them, but it didn't seem to drive really nice, so maybe a boot on that, that'd be good. Yeah, I've got, got a boot kit though, so that's all right. Yeah, that one's okay there. Springs and shocks and everything, coilovers look all nice, don't they? Look at that again, it's just in good nick, isn't it? A quick wire brush and so, you know, a reapplication of Schultz is gonna do the world of difference under here. It's gonna keep it as good as it is, but this is a really nice Spitfire. Engine looks all good, everything's nice. Lots of this like plants underneath there, bit of oil there. Look at these chassis rails are again dead sound. Had a bit of work there, but pretty good. Nice, nice, nice. Just looking at this rail all the way along. Both sides, really solid. Again, very quick wire brush and paint and that'll be good as gold. Nice chrome lines looking good. That looks, you know, fairly new. It's had some work done, fair play. Has had some work done. You know, up there again. It's had a bit of welding and stuff done there, but it's fine, it's good. That's, I'm sure it's, <laughs> it's, look, I suppose it's supposed to be there, not quite there. Looks like maybe I've done that, but Whatever, if it works, it works. Yeah, nice. You can see, yeah, it's had a bit of stuff going on there, but whatever. Decent, you know. All these, look how good all this is. Again, lots of fur on it, weird. Really clean, really nice, no massive rot. This is a Triumph Spitfire we're looking at, you know. Don't forget that. They rust for fun. This is really solid. This is a great car. I am pleased. Have I bought a good thing? No inner cells, decent. Like a few little scabs and a few bits that aren't maybe aesthetically as nice, but who cares, man? You know, this is not a concourse winning example. This is going to be a nice little on the road machine. Right then. Uh, What's, I don't think that's supposed to be doing that. Okay, what, uh, I heard some knocks. So, that feels really solid. That feels really solid as well, kind of. I've got the feeling that's not necessarily supposed to be there. I'm sure it's supposed to be tucked up. It's supposed to be a lot closer to everything. So we might have to take that off and redo these a little bit because it looks like these are maybe not perfect but again i'll have a look at what's supposed to be there exhaust looks in great nick but again it's not it's not connected at the back so we're gonna have to find ourselves a couple of rear exhaust clamps but again you know people have been here decent yeah 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 we'll sort it we'll sort it 
Interesting. Okay, look at that. It's just a nice panel. I can see a spot weld. Everything's good. Nice new bit of metal. That's what we want. A bit of primer over it. Really good. Really good. Bottom of the doors look okay. They'll they'll sand. You know. What do these wires do. Maybe reverse light. I would have thought something like that. We'll have a little look. A little bit of a uh, oil drop in there. Won't mind checking fluids in a couple of things as well. An interesting observation what I have just observed is that when you spin one wheel it spins the prop instead of the other wheel although it's doing it a little bit more now. Usually though if you do that with a diff it just spins the other wheel, it doesn't really turn the prop because there's more resistance there. So let's see if we can hold the prop in place. I mean it feels alright, it feels pretty good. Yeah, okay. I think we need to have a look at the oil level in this. We've got to check it out. A little drain plug there. Uh, I mean, fill a plug there, but no drain plug. That's not it, is it? Is that the drain plug right at the back, this bolt hole? Could be. I'll have to give it a little Google. All looks decent though, all the, you know, connections and everything are nice, nothing's bent. Have I bought something good? I mean, I'd like to think so. It seems pretty decent to me. Everything seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing, apart from maybe these brakes here. But apart from that, it could be worse, couldn't it? Why are you not the right size? What happened then? They're pretty cool, aren't they? We might not need these though. Because what I'm thinking, now that I've seen underneath and I've seen probably what we're going to have to fork out for, for this car, hey, yes, is a set of mini lights or ultra lights. Those wheels are ugly, old, and the paint's all gone on them. I'd need to get them refurbed anyway. Ultra lights or mini lights aren't that expensive and they transform an old car like this. I saw a Spitfire once with ultra lights on and I thought they look amazing so I wanted to do it. So that's what I'm probably going to do. I priced it up last night, it was 500 quid. With tyres. <sighs> Interesting. Goodridge hoses, it says there. Again, like looking like brand new pads maybe put in a caliper and then sort of not moved slider not all the way home discs are like brand new as well you know could these come back to life with a bit of use maybe not far off at all are they I don't like the look of that master cylinder anyway though. I'm thinking we should just put a master cylinder on it and keep an eye on these. And if needs be, we'll, we'll do caliper rebuilds or something and maybe, because I, I can't imagine Goodrich hoses are gonna collapse. If, you, if you've ever had a Goodrich braided metal hose collapse on you, let me know. I think with these wheels as well, we are missing the oh, beauty rings. And they're really bloody heavy, these steelies as well. 
And a great thing about ultralights is, as they say, they are ultralight. That's what they sort of do specifically is be lights. So it makes your car handle a bit better. But again, same story over here. It looks okay, it just looks like new discs, new pads put in and then parked up. So the calipers at extremities, you know. Everything else looks decent. All the brake hoses that look like, they're not that old. It's warm that though, so I think maybe we'll just have a look at, we'll do a master cylinder because it's ugly anyway, and then we'll see what goes on with these. Everything else is decent though, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of fettling here and there. So what do you think of it then? Do you like it? I like it. I think it's really cool. I think it's probably the best Spitfire I could have bought for the money, really. And I'm thinking we do some sort of 10 day resurrection, 10 day restoration on the car, you know, try and get it over that line that it's stalled at. I'm thinking we probably spend the majority of that on the bodywork. You know, there's going to be a lot of filling and sanding and just making it look nice. Majority of the 10 days is probably going to go on that. The interior, we can make really nice. I think there's enough stuff in there. It doesn't really matter about the silver thing. We just put a bit of black stuff on there. It's great, you know. We'll make it look decent. Decent enough that the new owner can just sort of have a little bit of a fettle over time, you know. We'll try and make everything look square. A little bit of work underneath. You've got the exhaust, you know, a little couple of bolts. Um, brakes, we'll have a look at. I think it's pretty decent, you know. We'll make it good, especially with a set of mini lights and all looking like brand new. It's going to be a nice car. So that's going to do it for today. That is the end of the first episode of the Triumphant Triumph, which I've just named it then. Um, yeah, let me know if you like it. Let me know what you'd like to see done to it. And uh, let me know if you had one of these, if you thought they were any good, any tips, hints, stuff that I might need to know. How do these things, how do they fit on? Are they welded or are they bolted? Do I have to cut them off and weld them on differently? Um, anything that you think I need to know, let me know. And also, if you've enjoyed any of this, give me a subscribe, give me a like, do all that cool stuff, put the notifications thing on, and then you'll be able to see when the next episode of this comes out, which I'm not sure is going to be when, because it's going to be quite a long episode, you know? We're going to be doing a lot of stuff in that episode. It's going to be busy. I um, didn't really get my hands dirty that much today, did I? It's pretty cool. Right, thanks very much for watching. See you soon. Bye. Exhaust hangers. Paint. Um, oh, I need straws as well, don't I? For mixing. Uh, what else do we need? Oh, yeah. Ultralights. Probably a fitting kit. Um, oh, yeah. Master cylinder. 